Want to remind everyone to head out to the www.www.stogegeeks.com website and check out all of the reviews, audio, and video versions of our show. That's right. You can, on the Stogie Geeks um, website and show, you can read, you can watch, and you can listen, and you can see all of the cigars that Tim and I have been smoking. And I hope to get the other members set up with their, with their own accounts, too, because it's kind of fun, right? If you've got an iPhone, which I think most of us do, right? Take a picture of the cigar you're going to smoke. You go into this app. You can upload it right to the website, put a little description, tag yep. it with a rating. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's wonderful. It gives our listeners and readers the ability to go in and see what we like to smoke, mm-hmm. right? Because if you go in, you can look at all the sticks we've tagged as Oasis. Well, right there, you know what you should be smoking. Absolutely. And, and that's really one of the ways we, uh, we use technology to uh, help you choose what cigar to smoke because that's what we're all about. And, uh, you know, the kind of cigars that we review on this show are the ones you smoke. So it could be a boutique cigar, it could be Cuban, it could be regular production, could be limited, could be not. Uh, and I like to uh, – I, I, I like the, the structure that we have. I think it, it suits us, and I think it helps out our listeners. Mm-hmm. Speaking of helping our listeners, we want to help our listeners understand the different parts of the tobacco plants and also some of the different kinds of plants mm-hmm. um, that are out there. So um, it, it's him made a very good observation. You know, the uh, we started talking about the Criollo uh, mm-hmm. plant, which and you were saying before the show, I think we've mentioned before, right, is the original um, traditional kind of Cuban right. plant, the, a plant that would grow in Cuba. Mm-hmm. It is of a cer- specific variety that was uh, first origins in Cuba. Mm-hmm. Now, did they take those same Cuban seeds and plant them in Nicaragua and Honduras? Well, the hybrid and seed, they call it like a Croyo 98, where the regular Croyo had a lot of problems with blue mold. Mm-hmm. So with the hybrid, they yield more. Gotcha. Not, not not as as good as a, the regular Croyo. Yeah. But this 98 is used. Speak up, Stogie said. I'm having trouble hearing you. Sorry, Ben. That's okay. With the Croyo 98 hybrid seed, it's used for almost in a lot of a lot of different makers of the cigars. It what happened was saying Tim, the regular Croyo many years ago had a lot of problem with blue mold and, and, and the yield wasn't as high. And I'm not saying that's the only reason they used the 98, but the Croyo 98 is used exclusively through. Throughout throughout the uh, different cigar. regions, yeah. Oh, and th- so I was going to ask you: so is uh, Criollo the different primings of the plant? It's a plant itself. It's not it's a prime. Plant itself, it's a right. plant, right? But they'll take the different primings of a Criollo mm-hmm. plant, mm-hmm. use some on the wrapper, some on the binder, right. some on the filler. Correct. That kind of thing. I got right. you. Um, so the different classifications uh, or the different primings. So this is just the position of the leaf on the plant. Right, exactly. Like l- l- people call Lajero. Lajero is the top, the top of the plant. Yeah, the very top the of the plant. Pri- the three primary pr- uh, primings are going to be Lajero. Then you're going to go into your viso, which is in between that and your seco. As you go down yeah. the plant, I think everyone is familiar. That it's a more milder. I wouldn't say mild. It's not as strong as Lagero. From what I understand, the, the top of the the top leaves on the plant, the Lajero, mm-hmm. those are the leaves that have been on the plant the longest. The longest, right. It, it, they think, I don't know, it's a good a good analogy, 12-year-old uh, scotch, 20-year-old. You know, it's time. It, it, it's on the oh, plant. You, so you it's it? not so much the amount of sunlight it gets, but there's the time. Yeah, the time. Well, it's, it's both into it's one. It's both, yeah. yeah. yeah I yeah, mean, you yeah. think it's, it's exposed more to sun. Lagero, it's like I said, viso seco is used a lot, but Lagero, that's where you're going to get your strength. Yeah. And, yeah, and just time. Like, you know, Lajero has been on the plant mm-hmm. longest, so obviously it's going to... It, Probably going to have mm-hmm. the most nicotine so, content. Mm-hmm. Lajero typically used as filler? Mm, um, for the most part, yeah. Okay. Yeah. If we, again, it's a rougher leaf, so they're not going to use it. You're not going to see that on a wrapper. Yeah. Um, so now the, the Seiko and Viso are also primarily filler. Right. Uh, exactly. So this way here, you know, different blendings. It, mm-hmm. it, it, again, with, with the Viso a little bit stronger. I mean, a little bit more mild than a seco. So three primary. And then you got your different kind of cutting, to stalk cut, the yeah, T-52. Yeah, 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 yeah. Much more expensive way to, 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 to yeah, prime your plant. the whole plant down. Yeah, right. So, again, the, the T-52 is so a... So in, in a Criollo leaf class, uh, the uh, various primings uh, the, from top to bottom. Right. Lajero, Viso, Seco. Now, there's uh, two below that. Seco, that list. yeah. Oh, yeah, but uh, that's the three primary. The three primary, uh, yeah. Lajero, Viso, Seco, and then uh, uh, Seco, Capote, yeah. mm-hmm. and then Volato. Volato being the bottom. Being the very, very bottom. Right. And right. You know, those, they'll use those similar classifications on different styles 
Uh, there are different uh, types so of plants. plants. Right. right. Exactly. Yeah. But Whereas this one, as Tim pointed out, this is the uh, Lajero Viso Seco Capote mm-hmm. Volado is how they classify where the primings are on right. the Criollo plant. Now, you take a different kind of plant. Same type such of... Such as a Corojo plant, right. right? So Corojo is a totally different, different type, of, type plant, of plant. Right. And they will do a, a different same priming. Kind of, same primings or maybe less classification. Right. And, and a lot of times they get the different type of nuances cigar. They'll even position this, the, the leaf comes off the, 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 the plant. Mm-hmm. You just reverse it. Sometimes that's a complexity, different type of uh, of smoke that comes out of there. Well, wow. oh, why, why, so why is it spicy up front but not in the back? Right. Just in the position so if of you leaf. Were, if you were looking at the top of yeah, the plant, yeah. like in north, south, east, right. west kind of thing, mm-hmm. where they pull them, even that makes a difference. Yeah, yeah just in the position of the leaf in that, yeah, in, in the cigar. And then sometimes they use that a would double binder. How, where the sun hit it and yeah. how long it hit yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. How long it hit it for. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that, yeah you're yeah, saying, yeah. well, wow, it finished with spice or it come up with spice in the front. Then you're, you're also, you're looking at uh, double binders, which give you a little bit more flavor. Because you're using, you know, twice the amount of tobacco right. that's in there. Now, what's confusing, and there was a, a discussion on another, and I'll, I'll use another analogy here. The uh, the K9 Lookout show was talking <laughs> about this particular uh, issue, and I wanted to delve into a lot more uh, detail and really talk with everyone here on the show and get feedback from our our audience about all the different you know, ways in which that affects the cigar that you're ultimately smoking. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot to go into it. And I don't want to use the word science, right? It's still very much an art. There is is a splash of science that goes into it, right? Sure. There are different types of plants, like with different primings, Mm -hmm. how long the sun is Crop rotation. We've already, and how they rotate the crops and Mm -hmm. stuff like that. So I I find it very fascinating. And I never really like sat down and thought about how all that plays into how your cigar smokes and tastes and the flavors that it gives off. I, I mean, mean, you get you get a, like the Pepin family, um, Padron, all of them, I can, all the big names. What they do, the probably better than anybody else. I mean, it's great that you know what your primings are, what your plants are, uh, et cetera, et cetera. It's fermentation. Right. You rush that fermentation. Doesn't you could put that cigar in yeah. your humidor for five years and it's not going to change. But your fermentation. Look at look what Opus X does. Yeah. I mean, I'm not just uh, getting that. They they're not going to rush anything. Neither is neither is Ernesto. Neither is Padron. Neither is Pepin. I mean, the Godfathers of uh, uh, smokes. I mean. So once they pull the leaf off of the plant, mm-hmm. they store it in that immediately. In a bale. In a ba- and that yeah. immediately begins the fermentation. Right. Process. And then and, and I don't know. I they don't. They hang it from a pole. The they dry it. Right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. But. The whole thing, the fermentation, when they put it in the bale, by the time they put it in the bale, it could be, I, I don't quote me on the amount of days it, 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 that they do the bale. Then they start, all, they reposition it, take the bottom, put it on the top. I yes. got gotcha, you. They gotcha. keep yep. rotating that bale this way here, the fermentation and making sure it's correct. And then watching them, watch them uh, I'm, I'm jumping ahead of the, uh, the game, watching them devein a leaf is incredible. Oh, so they're, they're yeah, yeah. The, the, oh, it's amazing. Yeah. It's mm. simply, simply amazing. Oh, and not, when we were at Camp Camacho, yeah. n- women were the only ones yeah. allowed to oh, do no, so, it. Uh, yeah, so is it, you, you guys took a trip, uh, Ben yeah. and Sogi Santa, yeah. to uh, Honduras. Honduras, so been there a couple times. So you get to see kind yeah. of the, the process. Yeah, the yeah. process. The human, by the time, if you look at it, uh, you get something the size of this particular glass right here, maybe not as, as, as high. It's full of seeds. And by the time that seed is put into the ground, divided numerous times into plants, from what I was told from uh, Christian, was that it touches the human hands approximately 100 times before you put this cigar in your hand. Think about that. 100 times. So now um, I want to take a little break from this uh, great discussion and just talk about how everyone's uh, aging room cigars uh, turned out for the show. I think most of us, Tim, have you finished yours? I am down to the last half inch, man. I am nubbing this thing. Uh, it's awesome, mm-hmm. absolutely awesome. I'm I'm enjoying the hell out of it. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't quite down pretty good. It, it, it finished uh, very strong for me. I thought it was very very no, strong. No, I, I, I just got a little. I, again, I, I think it's moisture yeah. that, that mm-hmm. was an issue here. Uh, mine, I got a little tough uh, at the end so, of the draw. Uh, Tim uh, had just mailed, they came in the mail today. Mm-hmm. So that could have been some of the problems. No, no, no oh, I think the, the flavor, yeah. I think the cigar is very, uh, very, very good. This traveled for the last week. I mean, it, yeah. it's been around, so. Uh, so, Tim, now uh, to kind of transition into one of the other cigars, did you smoke the um, Ferdinand, Fernando Leone Family Reserve? 
I have not. It's sitting right here in front of me, actually. Okay. Uh, Stogie Santa has lit his up. I'm about to light mine up as, as well. Um, we we I know should we have went the other way around. We should have did yeah, this cigar first. This one's probably a, a little bit milder. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a, like a Corona Gorda size. Uh, Fernand Leone Family Reserve. These look very interesting to me. La Aurora being one of my uh, great bl uh, brands. Blend. I mean, yep. we talked about the, the Cameroon Lancero before. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm lighting mine up now. What's your assessment of uh, this cigar so far? Are you a little ways in, in the first third? Uh, I got a, a little, uh, I would say a creaminess off it. I haven't got much. I, I can't really, I haven't got anything much more than that. Mm. You know, nothing that can really jump out. I, you know, no... I haven't got anything earthy or anything, uh, any kind of wood flavors off or anything at all. I just got a slight cream to it. Mm. Tim, I'll, Tim, you haven't lit yours up yet, huh? I'm laying mine up right now. Mark Jr., are you still working on your aging room? Did you, let, you lit something else up. I finished my aging room. I, I absolutely like it. I, I, I thought, thought it was, it was great, really, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's going to be in all my day long. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I smoked, uh, I'm smoking a cigar I picked up off a listener, Derek Speedbump uh, on BOTL. It's a 2010 Viaje Robusto, uh, the second release in 2010. It's the bundle release. Mm -hmm. um, love the blend. Can't get Was enough it, um, of them. The exclusive, you said? Yeah. Exclusive okay. Robusto from 2010, yeah. Yeah, nice. I've got a couple nice. of those, maybe one in my box, too. I really like that, that blend, too. I picked up five of these and five of the double-edged swords off of them. Yeah. And they're both. Nice. Well, the double-edged sword is probably, I think, one of the top two or three he put out. The really? Double -edged. That's my opinion, anyway. <clears throat> it's very good. Mm. Uh, like now, now, Ben, you lit up a, a cigar as well? I did. Uh, I um, uh, got the cigar. I was at a beer tasting at a local tavern, Treehouse Tavern. Um, got a. Oh, yeah, that was a Mr. J. Havana Shop uh, event, which unfortunately I couldn't yep. attend due to travel. You know, that was that was the Oktoberfest. This this one was tonight. They were doing uh, Vice, oh, okay. Vice Stepan uh, Brewery, the oldest brewery in, in the world, apparently. Mm -hmm. um, I got a uh, Hamey Garcia, Connecticut. Uh, it's a little mild. Uh, to oh, what's the oldest brewery in the, the German? It's a German brewery, right? Yeah, it's Vice Stepan. Yes. Uh, it's. Yes. Uh, Founded in 11th century. Yeah. So. Their beers are. Very good. They actually had them at the Oktoberfest. Uh, so they've been making uh, it for yeah. a millennium. They've been making yeah. beer for a millennium. 978 years. Just yeah. starting out. They got that stuff figured out by now, right? Not yeah. wild. It's very, very good. Very good beer. Yeah. And so you're smoking the Jaime Garcia. Uh, Jaime Garcia, Connecticut. Um, it, it's pretty good. I just I wouldn't have followed it up with. Uh, um, that Connecticut holds up, though. It's, it does. It's, it's, pretty, uh, it's, it's a pretty bold Connecticut. Yeah, I, yeah, I has some nice pepper and spice on it. Yep. No, no, it, for for Connecticut, it definitely holds its own. For those, uh, just a quick note on that. Um, so everyone was talking very highly about the limited Connecticut from this mm -hmm. year. Yeah, I had one from last year, and I smoked it, and it sucks. I'd smoke them now. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't let them really? age. Don't let them age. Smoke them now. Interesting. It just aged out. Yeah. It was. It was completely flat, and I wow. smoked it with him. Yeah, Made it halfway through. We were on a fire and. Wow. Wow. That's that's discouraging news. Yeah. Not that I have any aging, but... <laughs> uh, so just getting back to the uh, Criollo plant, um, we got our information from Tobacconist University. I just want to give mm -hmm. a plug for their uh, website. Great site. Yeah, and if, you, if right on the screen behind you, you can mm -hmm. see the, the pr different primings right. of, the, of the plant, roughly where the uh, Lijero Seiko... Right. Viso, Capote, Valado yep. uh, come from. Mm -hmm. um, so they say that Seiko is mostly used for filler, Capote for binder, yep. Valado is also filler. Yep. Um, so they give you kind of the breakdown of each plant. And, and what I really want to uh, harp on here is when you go research cigars and look at what you're buying, it can be very confusing because mm -hmm. they'll say, well, maybe it's a Criollo binder. And the filler is Lejero, mm -hmm. but they won't say what kind of plant the Lejero right, came exactly. from. Exactly, it's so very vague. It's very vague. It's like you know, hand motions. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh hey, look over here, and it's like, oh my god, I don't know what exactly is in the cigar. And I'm sure a lot of that's done on purpose, right? Right, oh, of course. Um, I think generally, though, when you see the word Lejero marketed with a cigar, or you hear double Lejero, that typically for a novice cigar smoker, that typically means strong cigar. I mean, Absolutely. That's how I take it, Ben. I, yep. I, think oh, when, yeah. I think when you see it marketed, when you hear the word Lahiro, 
or or even Viso, mm-hmm. or you know, you, you have the Fonseca uh, Viso Forte, yeah. which you know. Uh, uh, but more importantly, the hero. I think when you hear the word the hero, you should think strong cigar, or at least a, a spicy cigar. Mm-hmm. I, I always when I hear the hero, I I know it's going to be strong. I know it's going to have some strength and spice, but there's a certain amount of sweetness with it too, that I, mm-hmm. I often associate yeah. with the hero. Um, the underlying. Yeah, yeah. It, it's underlying. I agree 100. Yeah. Um, percent But that's me personally. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think there's a lot of uh, Nicaraguan cigars, right? That yeah. will yeah. be very strong and use a lot of the Nicaraguan Lajero. Yeah. And really, I think all they mean is the the plant was grown in Nicaragua. Mm-hmm. Maybe you don't know which kind of plant type right. it was, but the uh, primings come from the top of the plant. Mm-hmm. It tends to be very strong, and it has that for me that Nicaraguan kind of. There's a almost a there's a flavor zing. associated. It's a zing, yeah, it's yeah, a zing yeah. or a twang. I want to use those yeah. words. I know they, I don't know they don't very like accurately a, describe what that is. I got right? like a but, dirt taste to it too. Yeah. Um, so I I think that's important for the cigar smoker for a lot of reasons. One is you want to get to know what maybe what kinds of different types of tobacco you like to smoke. You like to have in your cigars because um, Carrillo uh, and Corojo are two different plants. Yeah, so I've got the Corojo right. plant up there right. as well. So the uh, Tobacco News University has two separate pages, which we'll link to in our show notes. Yeah. Uh, one is the Corojo plant, and one mm-hmm. is the Corojo plant. So the Corojo plant is up there now. Now, Stokey Santa, they'll list the top of this plant as Coronas, which Corona we know as a size, but in this uh, context, they're listing it as a, a priming of the mm-hmm. plant or where the, the leaves come from on the uh, on the plant, mm-hmm. um, which is interesting. And there's a bunch of other different primings right. that they'll name on the Corojo plant. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's all, the reason I wanted to cover it is because it's all very confusing, right? Oh, so it the, is. It, so it, the different kinds of plants, the different kinds of primings. And there was another the priming, things. like I mentioned before, the new, uh, what they call it, the uh, Monte Cristo 2012, what they call it, T, not T52, something, there's a uh, 552 or 5, there's another priming I never heard of on the top of the plant. Yeah. Never. Yeah, yeah. And I, it, it is. There, there is so many, you know, different... Um, pr- it, so you're, it can also relate to the region in which the plant oh, is, is grown. absolutely. Jalapa so, Valley, uh, yeah, wherever. Jalapa is uh, Nicarag- yeah. Nicaragua, right? Right. Um, so the Dominican styles are uh, Olor, mm-hmm. which is a Dominican variety. Um, has very large leaves, commonly used for filler or mm-hmm. binder. Um, it can be a distinctly dry flavor, Tobacco University says. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of have a drying of the mouth. Um, Olor is a Spanish term for smell, coincidentally. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, we've talked about a lot of cigars that have Olor, Dominican, or Piloto, right? Which yep. is another yeah. variety yeah. Uh, from Dominican, which originated in Cuba, but now commonly cultivated mm-hmm. in Dominican Republic and other Central American. And, and they like countries. to use hybrid seeds because, it, as you know, almost any, any plant is susceptible to that blue mold. Yeah, that, that's interesting. You mentioned the blue mold before. We've talked mm-hmm. about that yeah. on the show yep. in the past. Mm-hmm. Um, and as you mentioned before, Stogie Santa, Jalapa Valley, which is uh, Nicaraguan uh, tobacco, mm-hmm. a region in the northeastern part of Nicaragua near the southern border of Honduras. Mm-hmm. So, Now, when you guys went to Honduras, what else did you kind of see in the whole, uh, you know, from plant to cigar process that might be interesting? Uh, uh, the, the other one was, was when they were in there uh, with the bales. The, the, the biggest thing that, if anything stuck out in my mind, was when you walked into where they were doing the fermentation. It, yes. The best way I can explain it was taking the cap off an ammonia bottle and sniffing yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, that's what people you, say. You was go that, in there. It, was that when uh, we, we went into that room? It was very, very humid, and they had yeah. the yeah. They, they basically had the uh, um, the uh, what was it the the wheels? Yeah. Uh, you know, it, very humid, but the, there was oh. a lot of lot of smell. Oh, it was a that, lot of o- different types of odorants in that room. Mm. That uh, I think that's a process. I think in that room, that's where you get a lot of the nuances mm-hmm. that you get in cigars. I think that's where that comes from. Hey, hey, mine, uh, the other one I was looking at, the two things they use color coding to, to do, like, well, they'll have a bunching room where the where the bunches will go in. And what they do, they're, like you, as you see here, the Corojo, uh, different different plants that they're going to use. What they, I, I found, I did a little PowerPoint presentation on that at, for where I, the other job I had a while, long ago, is what they'll do on, on the plants, they'll put a color code on it. So when they go, they, 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 it's hard to see, you know, well, well what's this one, that's one. So they'll color code it for a Corojo, color, color, color code it for a Corojo, mm-hmm. uh, a Hero, uh, different bindings, I mean, different priming so that they know yeah. what to get to use for a buncher. 
to do a prime uh, for the um, yeah, oh, yeah. The, for the binder and and, and uh, the filler right, because right. you'll see like on on, on a on something you're gonna use for wrap is delicate. It's usually like a, a, a shade. Mm -hmm. You don't you don't want it susceptible too much of, of the weather. And, you want a perfect, not perfect, but like I'm saying, let, take a look at that. The, I mean, the it's best, estimated. It's true that the best, the absolute best leaves of the harvest are used for the wrapper, and it's it all. Expensive. And the whole, the whole part, the whole leaf process of getting that leaf ready to be rolled, it's all done by women. Yeah, because what, what, and when they're rolling, because what they, what women have a better color vision than a man. Right. No, it's exactly. very true. It's very it's true. true. I yeah. mean, like my color vision, again, I'm a colorist by trade and, and teaching lean manufacturing, but my color vision is exceptional. But that's not. I wouldn't, uh, you probably get 10 men, and I don't know what the ratio is. You yeah, get 10 yeah. women and 10 men in a room, guaranteed the larger percent, that's why they cho choose a woman, because they have be better color vision. There's mm. no doubt about it. I mean, it, it's not really color. It's a light and dark situation, not so much red, green, and brown, but it's more of a darkness, lightness. Excellent. Mm -hmm. uh, now, Tim, did you want to weigh in? I know you reviewed this, uh, this segment. Uh, I wasn't sure if there's any... Uh Anything that you've noticed kind of over the years that uh, we've been smoking and uh, doing the show that uh, you've learned that might be interesting about the different kinds of plants, different kinds of primings, uh, the process? Yeah, I think it's more of a um, – um, I really wish more manufacturers would give more detail on what they're using, generally um, speaking. I don't think – you'll never see that. A lot of manufacturers that. just give the origin of mm -hmm. the tobacco for the binder filler wrapper. Oh, they'll use a lot of marketing terms for the binder filler wrapper. Um, I personally, as a smoker, would love to know more about what they're blending. Um, that, that's a, they're not going to do it. They're just not going to do it. Yeah. Yeah, they're not going to do it. No, I mean, no matter what. Let's be real about it. No. I mean, there's a lot of different tobaccos out there that we haven't covered. I mean, there's Habano, there's San Andreas and Negro, uh, there's Broadleaf, there's Sumatra. Right. Um, it, it, it's all very confusing, and a lot of it, but, a lot of it is confusing because of the way the manufacturer is presented to us. I, I think if you break it down though into about five different segments, that you know you can kind of um, navigate yourself into what you think you like and what you know you don't like. So you know right. what we've covered. So obviously, type of seed, that's going to be a, a, an important variable. Geographical yep. location of where it's grown, so Nicaragua, Honduras versus Dominican Republic, that's going to be a factor. Absolutely. Um, uh, priming of the cigar is going to be a factor. Um, you know, the processing of the cigar, so more importantly, which factory does it is going to be a factor. Um, uh, those are the four I have. I think there's one more, but, you know, just look at those factors. Break it up into type of seed. Geographical location, which factory is processing it, and and you might have a better sense sense of, you know, what what you're looking for more in a cigar. Are you looking for a Nicaraguan cigar? What type of cedar you're looking for? You know, you, and it all and it all goes out the window if construction sucks. Yeah, yeah, true. Say that if construction, if burn and draw does not perform the way you expect it to, it does not matter anymore. And, so and, now, I have a question for you, Stogie saying We yeah, got a, uh, another page up there that talks about the different kinds of seeds. Now, is broadleaf a kind of plant, or a, just a description of the leaf, or a particular priming? No, that's not a priming. That's a particular leaf. That's it's a wrap. Yeah, that's leaf. not a priming. That's so a it's leaf. it's a particular kind of that's plant, plant right. that produces a broad... And, 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 and that's what you're saying. That it's called broad well, leaf like, because it's, the leaves are, are really uh, large. And, and they're very thick. And like, if you look at uh, a lot of peat stuff, mm. hence, that, there you go right there. Look how thick and leafy and, and yeah. what they are. And, 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 and they're enough. suitable for wrappers because they have right. to wrap the whole cigar, in, ideally in one leaf, to mm -hmm. hold it all together. And, and don't don't forget, sometimes that can change the flavor of a cigar. Sometimes they can use a whole leaf, mm -hmm. right? And you get the whole leaf. Of that. Then they use a robusto, robusto they got to cut the leaf. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Uh, things like that make a difference. Mm -hmm. So I mean, you, you're using a whole leaf on a cigar. And where, where you're using maybe you get two or three robustos off one leaf. Another thing is you go to Cameroon. What do you notice about Cameroons? What can't you do with a Cameroon? You can't, it's winter time. You can't. can't you, you, cold it's a thinner, it cracks. Yeah. It's just like that. It's the same thing well, with yeah. Habanos. Now, now so is Cameroon, it says Central Africa. Is that where the plants originate from? They take yeah, the right. Seeds? Take the seed. Same thing with okay. Connecticut. Yeah. They, they yeah. take a Connecticut seed. Where do they grow it? 
Ecuador. Yeah, yeah. And so, that's been a very popular area. Right, Ecuador, that's a huge, exactly. Right now are very, very popular. Right. And like I said, in this one, this is so true. Sumatra has to grow it there, then it doesn't connect. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. Why they're using I, it. Oh, yeah, they're the labor everywhere. But the, 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 there's a great, the Sumatras are just known notoriously for the, the, the shade difference. On, it's like in a box that people say, I'm getting screwed here. Look at it. You can't, Sumatra is known for that. I for mean, your color variation. Oh, shade, yeah. not color. It, uh, yeah, people think of color, they're yeah, thinking yeah, yeah, yeah. like red, you know, reddish brown or something. No, it's white and dark. So I gotcha. I it's gotcha. more of a shade. It's a good distinction. Mm -hmm. Company, uh, a note on that. Companies will roll up thousands of cigars and then they will color match them, mm -hmm. shade match yeah. them for that matter. Yeah. Oh, you have to. So that when they're in the box, they're not next to something that's drastically different. Uh, like you I might see. take something from the bottom and the top right. and they might be slightly different shades, mm -hmm. but they won't present them that way. And then another cool thing too, though, is for those of you that live in New England, if you're a cigar smoker, you absolutely have to take the ride through nine, up 91 Connecticut Valley. in Connecticut. It's so awesome. That's where all the shade, like a lot of the shade grown yeah. is grown. Yeah. Sometimes when they cut it, you'll see these like little golf carts going by and they're just hanging the leaves from there. It's really And cool. what they mean by shade grown, what they mean by that, they put a cheesecloth yeah, right. over the top. Over the plant. And what it does, it forces the plant to go up, to, to reach for the sun. Mm. So that's a cheesecloth. It, and when we were down in Honduras, it was amazing. It was like football lengths, hundred, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of yards it's amazing, and you, you, we saw one field where you can, like I was saying, getting down to a science. I, I, I don't even know what they did. You saw one field. I'll just throw a number out there: thirty, forty, fifty percent of the field was like garbage. And we went to another uh, supply. You can see everything. Oh, Eighty, the eighty-five to ninety percent was perfect. Every plant was the same size, doing the same thing. You got people exactly know what they're doing. It is a science. This is not by mistake. Yeah, yeah. This is not by mistake. And, and think about something. If you, it, it, that's what, you get someone like Rocky Patel, who doesn't even own a factory, right? He just owns the fields. So if they don't produce, no skin off his, you know, behind. He's a smart man. Yeah, it's amazing. All the stuff that we've talked about, right? You mentioned Rocky Patel. I was listening to uh, an interview with Rocky Patel, and he said they produce 20 million cigars That's a right, year. That's right, a year. Produce, not, not grow. Yeah, That's not a grow. big difference. It's a difference, right? It's a, oh, big, it's a big difference, yeah. yeah. And, and so he talked about the whole seconds thing, which we've talked about on the show before, too, and said, you know, there's, Thank you. when you're producing 20 million cigars, I think you're going to end up with a lot of different seconds. Um, uh, well, that are short fills, and short fills another thing, when it's not the whole leaf. Like, uh, so, yeah, so describe to me the Papa's difference Frito. in the context yes. of, the, of this discussion, the difference between a short filler and B-grade tobacco, right? Cause, oh, there's different grades of tobacco. Yeah, because now the, uh, what's the cigar that I like that I bought a couple of boxes for Ambos Mundos? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ambos Mundos, right, is B-grade tobacco. Right. You can get those on auction for about $3 a stick. And they're fantastic. I, I mean, for knocking around in the yard or in the pool floating around, mm -hmm. my favorite cigar, hands mm -hmm. down. But now the B-grade tobacco, is that a reference to the priming or no. just the yield from the that yield, particular Not crop? so much the yield, the type of tobacco that it really the is. Quality, right? The quality, of the Right. Okay. Think about it. Yeah, exactly. Because now what, from what uh, I read an interview with Pete Johnson, he said that they uh, have to ferment that tobacco longer. Right. Because it's of a lower... The, of, of, of a lower quality. Look, and that's, that's what it comes out to be. Look at corn farmers, right? Corn farmers grow all this corn, right? And then they have to determine what's going to go to corn on the cob. Yeah. What's going to go corn. to a can, yeah. what's going to feed their cows, and what's going to become mm. ethanol, right? Uh, so, like, it, it's the same thing. They yeah, grade yeah. it. Yeah. Beef, beef. You got, yeah, yeah. You, you, yeah. Know, you got Kobe. prime, choice, you know, and then, for, and then there's, you know. USDA, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, USDA, yeah. exactly. Then you got McDonald's. <laughs> Great that, e, but well, that's, that's, not beef. that's mealy worms. So yeah, no, that's that. Thing, it's, that that's their own grade. Anytime right? I, I'm irregular, I go to McDonald's. Is that like a Swisher sweet? Is that yeah, the equivalent? exactly. <laughs> but, but again, it's it, it's amazing. Well, they say all beef now, but yeah, you know. right. You, you, I tell you what. Just when you think you know something about a cigar or what's going down, when you go to a factory, it's mesmerizing. You know, the big thing I. I the one other thing that uh, it doesn't really have anything to do with the growing of the of the tobacco, but this is more of the rolling and uh, and the construction of the cigar how they do it, is they have a drawer machine. They put it in the machine and you know uh, what it does it it 
measures to see if it goes it goes one to five and it passes a number, which I think is so ridiculous because I'm not going to. That's a long drawn out story, but that that to me, I was just watching that. It's like they tested the cigar in the beginning. I mean, at the very end, which is. You know, ludicrous. But again, that's what they use. it's called the draw. Exactly what it is. They still sell them. They put the cigar this way. It's supposed to measure that it's not going to be plugged, so to speak. Yeah. And as you can see, it's erroneous because if they it's, must not use them in Cuba. They, they don't use. Them. <laughs> oh, I mean, when you got fifty thousand cigars that are up here, and they start testing and they don't draw and say two thousand, three thousand doesn't. What do you think they're going to do with them? Mm. They're not going to put them back in there. That's when you get your, you know, um, your CI specials. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely a lot of that stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so what's your assessment on uh, your um, La Aurora, the uh, Ferdinando? I, I don't know uh, what I'm Leon. smoking. <laughs> I, I just, I'm really, I don't know. I don't, I'm not big on it. it it's um, very refreshing on the palate. <laughs> very what? Refreshing is how I use it, it's got some spice, it's got some sweetness, but that's all I can pick up. It's kind of... I got that little, I guess if you want to call it spice, I got like an irritation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's what I got, to be honest with you, but I mean, I'm, I'm so surprised. So this is one of the new ones to come out at IBCBR. I'm reading from uh, acigarsmoker.com. It's produced a, a review. There's five sizes. Um, he reviewed the size that we're smoking now. The wrapper is a Dominican Corojo. The binder is Dominican Corojo. Uh, the yeah. filler is Peruvian, Brazilian, and Dominican. That's a see to me there it's again. It's strength medium and body full. Um, and make a long story short, they gave it an 88, and these retail for about eight bucks a stick. The conclusion from a cigar smoker was: if you enjoy woody, spicy cigars that warm the mouth a bit, this is a great stick. Okay, I gotta ask everybody. All right, Mark, uh, it's me, Tim, and, and Paul. Woodiness, I don't get it. No, no, no I don't get that at all. No, I get the it's spice subtle spice. Bro. Uh, I mean, I get that Corojo spice. Yeah, exactly. And I get the warming of the mouth. Um, you're right, though. I, I would have smoked this before. Right. And maybe that's yeah. some of yeah, what I'm I, doing now. I, you know, I don't get a strong wood flavor. I, there's definitely a prominent flavor there um, that I can't place. Um, and it's not bad. I, I would say no, that no. I, I'm enjoying the cigar. Um, I get it right. You know, the whole thing is I, I like the back nine, not the front. I don't like mm. the front part of my tongue because it, it makes me... You know, it's just unbalanced. There is, a, there is some unbalance of, there. It, does, it can't make up its mind what it wants well, to do. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. There's a little bit of a tingle there, right? Exactly. Exactly, yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, again, to me, that just it's not so much young. It's just a balance of the cigar. Who knows? Maybe. It's hard to, to smoke what we just smoked, and then you go into yeah, this. Yeah, smoke this, yeah. That's what I wanted to do in the beginning. My but. assessment is that I would suggest our listeners try one of these. I yeah. think oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. oh, this is a do. You're going to have to. Oh, absolutely. You're going to have to seek these out and buy, and buy a five-pack and try right. them. Or and try them That's weird. We bought a five-pack online mm. and uh, wanted to review them for the show. Um, just, I mean, just because of La Aurora, really. I, if, if you look at a fiver and an 88, I think that's about – we're, we're yeah, talking probably about. on par. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that assessment. Yeah. Excellent. All righty. Did anyone have anything else that we wanted to mention aside from uh, join the uh, CRA? That's right. Cigar Support Rights of America. The, I mean, that, I mean, we started too late, but it's never too late to keep going. Yeah. Yeah, because, we got uh, to keep we, on. We, and that's you, another thing, listening to Rocky Patel. I mean, he's he's all about the that man. supporter. Uh, I'll yes. tell you what, you, you, and I really do he, thank him. He's for got that. his eggs in the right basket, uh, right? Absolutely. Rocky, there's some Rocky bashing out there because there are people that the man is he's a genius. He's very smart. He do whatever he wants to do. But one thing you can't take away from him, he he, he is a big, 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 big CRA man. And I take yeah. my hat off for him. Yeah. that he does that. Well, he's protecting the rights that we all have this right, right now yeah. to smoke cigars, and we need to protect those. Oh, Joining the CRA is something that you can do. I mean, it, it's not a that. big thing. It, it's not. I mean, you think about it. It's a price. It's, it's not a small even, investment. It, it is. It's a small investment. Just to, to hear our voices, because most people. Unfortunately, we seem to react instead of being proactive. And now yeah. I, I know everyone says too, it's not too late. I mean, we, we're, we're, in, we're in the fight for our lives, and it's not, it's not a joke. It's, it's very serious. Yeah. So uh, thanks, everyone, for listening. And, of course, to the Joey Geeks crew for uh, contributing to a fantastic show. Thanks to all the listeners. Uh, what, what? In yeah. <laughs> the chat room, Zedman, uh, MW Label, all very active in the chat room. Thank you, guys. And happy birthday to Mr. Margarini. Yes, happy birthday, happy birthday Tim. Tim. Thanks, everyone. And we'll see you on the next episode of the Stogie Geeks. Doesn't look a day over 60. Good night. Yeah.
Grazie.